Welcome to Two Hearts Dance and Yoga's Heart to Heart series. My name is Leanne Barber, owner and founder of Two Hearts Dance and Yoga, and it is my pleasure to bring you some rays of light to give us some inspiration today. So it is my pleasure to bring Marilissa Beatty with us today. She is a wonderful inspiration of light, and I'm super happy to be able to share her with you today. Marilissa was crowned as Mrs. Pennsylvania 2020 after previously crowned Mrs. Phoenixville, representing Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, and earning the Mrs. Photogenic Award. With this title, she will move on to compete at the higher level for the title of Mrs. America. Marilissa earned her bachelor's degree from the University of Delaware and a master's degree from Villanova University. She is the CEO and founder of her business, Key Qualitative Inc., a healthcare and pharmaceutical marketing research company. She has also started her own YouTube channel called All of Our Appearances Have Been Canceled that highlights pageant queens from past and present. Welcome, we're so happy to have you. Hey, hi, thank you for having me, I'm excited. Thank you, uh, we recently connected at the Three Iron Rations event and you took yoga with me and I just, yeah your light and your crown shine day. So I'm so happy to have you here with us. Um, before we get into things, Mary Lisa, can you tell us how the pandemic has affected your everyday life and business? Yes, I can. So I guess I'll start with the business. So being a business owner, um, I was certainly worried <laughs> to see how things would go. And I will say in the first couple months of the shutdown, all of my projects got postponed. So I spent two months locked inside on the couch. Um, but luckily my, my industry is back up and running exactly as it was. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, in terms of everyday life, I guess on a positive note, during this pandemic, my husband and I took up walking as a pastime, <laughs> which sounds silly, but I guess we just, didn't think about just going outside and walking around our own neighborhood. Um, and now we do it all the time. And it's just a great way to clear your mind. You get exercise, you get fresh air. So there have been upsides to this COVID situation. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing that with us. And yes, just getting outside sometimes and taking a fresh air, just a breather is so important. So thank you for uh, letting us because it's just so needed during this time. Um, so as we continue, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you grew up locally. Did you always want to be a pageant queen? So, no, I didn't. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Bucks County, Pennsylvania in a small town called Morrisville. And I was always a jock. I mean, I played sports, competitive sports all through um, college actually. I played rugby at the University of Delaware. And so um, I would watch pageants, but it never ever occurred to me to join one. And it's not that I didn't think I could, I guess it's just something I watched and those women were just a different breed. It didn't occur to me to, to do it. And I didn't consider pageantry until um, two years ago when I was 34 years old, I joined a pageant for the first time and it really has been life-changing. That is so wonderful. And thank you so much for sharing your kind of journey with us and um, knowing that you grew up locally, many of our community and our students can relate. So thank you so much. Um, I guess, tell us about your journey to Mrs. Pennsylvania and what led you to earning your crown. Okay. Well, I guess I'll start with what led me to start in pageantry. So. It was, like I said, two years ago, at the time my husband and I were living in Colorado, which we loved, but it was winter time, work was stressing me out. Um, I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling great at that moment. I wasn't necessarily feeling motivated to really make sure I was getting to the gym, make sure I was eating right. And I just was feeling down, honestly. And I wanted to do something that would challenge me and I was even getting more upset because I couldn't figure out what to do because I didn't want to do a marathon. <laughs> and like, that's all I could think of for some reason. And so I was watching Netflix and I saw the movie Dumplin', 
which <laughs> uh, is based on a novel, Jennifer Aniston's in it, but basically for anyone who hasn't seen it, um, the mom is an old time pageant queen and she seems in her, her age still really into looks and looking perfect and being perfect. And she has this daughter who is overweight, who she calls Dumplin. And so basically to spite her mother, Dumplin joins the local pageant almost to embarrass her mom, I think. Um, but along the way, Dumplin actually learns a lot about herself and other people, and she becomes an inspiration to others in the town. So I sat on the couch and I thought, well, if Dumplin can do it, I can do it. I'm going to join a pageant. And so I joined a pageant for the first time in my life at the age of 34. Um, and at that point, I didn't even know Mrs. Pageantry was a thing. So I both learned about the pageant and signed up within three months of having to compete. So suddenly within three months, I had to learn about this whole world I didn't know anything about. And so I did the pageant, I loved it. And the second I stepped off stage, I knew I wanna do it again and I wanna put everything I have into it. <laughs> and so um, that's what I did. <laughs> we ended up in the meantime moving to Pennsylvania and I just, I couldn't picture not competing. And I couldn't picture not trying to improve upon what I had learned last time. And it ended up with being lucky and blessed <laughs> to uh, have been honored with the crown. Wow, what an inspiring story. And I love that you referenced that movie because it's <laughs> yeah, if you have not seen that movie, you should actually absolutely go see it because yeah. it's really, very inspirational. And I'm glad that you know something so simple like that yeah and really inspire you and you're inspiring others just by saying this, um, that you know, you're, it's never too late. It's never too, um, people think that if they didn't do pageants when they were younger, that they're never gonna get into it. Um, I see that happening with some of my students where they're like, well, I didn't train when I was younger or I didn't do this when I was younger. Well, so what? There's still time. You can still you know, become the person that you want to be just by starting today. So thank you for sharing this super inspirational story, just coming from a movie as yeah. well, but so amazing. <laughs> Very cool. Very good. Um, so Mary Lisa, what were some of the challenges that you had in your pageant experience just first starting out? Well, there were many, um, but I will say the biggest challenge I faced in preparing for Mrs. Pennsylvania. Um, I end up crying in every interview I do. So I'm gonna attempt not to cry, but I probably will. Um, but as I was preparing for Mrs. Pennsylvania, um, my best friend passed away <laughs> in a car accident. So it was, <laughs> I mean, devastating, obviously, if you or anyone out there has ever lost someone. Um, and it's the first, good friend of mine that I had ever lost. So the first person my age who basically I had grown up with was like very much my person um, passed away suddenly. And it, it just rocked my world. And a lot of people too, he was a very, very beloved guy. So he was a ton of people's best friends. Um, he's the first person I met in college. And <laughs> his picture is actually right there. So he's like looking at me right now. Um, so that happened. And <laughs> so it was difficult because it was difficult to focus on anything, let alone preparing for a pageant, right? Which is essentially, you know, a hobby and something I was doing for myself. So, you know, it's hard to focus on work. It's just hard to focus on anything in life. And so that was difficult to deal with. But once I got over that very visceral, painful, shocked grief I was able to you know pull strength from him and be inspired by him and just know like how much he'd be cheering me on you know so it just so happened that at the Mrs. Pennsylvania pageant which is a place I know he would have been um, I took a little picture of him and I put it in my dressing room so he was there with me ultimately. And I know that, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't even know if you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I just know that, you know, he was there watching and he was there supporting me as he always had and now as he did for all of his friends and all of his family. So that 
that certainly was a challenge. Um, but yeah, now I just, I try to use them as a source of inspiration more so. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> this and I'm really sorry for your loss and I'm, you know, I can understand how that might be so devastating, but I'm glad to hear that, you know, just knowing that he's watching over you and that is keeping you staying in this and keeping you you know, nice and bright as you are. You have such a wonderful spirit and I'm sure so, you know, ecstatic and excited for you and all the things you're accomplishing. So yeah. really, really thank you for being with us. Don't ever apologize for being a human. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I need subtitles when I'm cry talking. It's like, and then this happened. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I'm okay. <laughs> it's okay. Good. Thank you so much for sharing that and just for opening up to us and how important it is that you continue to just share this light is just so special. It really is. Um, as you know, as we continue and um, thanks again for sharing, um, what would you say to anyone who might be watching this who is looking to enter into this experience? Do you have any tips for aspiring Mrs. Pennsylvania candidates specifically or anyone kind of in the area who's looking to do what you do? Yes, so I think my main point of advice is simple and it's just do it. You know, there's no better time than now. You're never necessarily going to be ready to take that step, right? Um, you don't know until you try. And I do, almost everybody, I try to encourage to join. And a lot of, one point that I hear from a lot of women is like, oh, it's just not my thing. Like I couldn't do that. And to those women, I say, you especially should do it because when you get outside of your comfort zone, that's really when you develop and you grow. I have seen women in this industry start as very kind of quiet um, women who have just gained so much confidence from it. And you will learn so much more about yourself and other people than you ever thought. And I guess the other thing that I try to convey, especially with my YouTube show, is that the pageant itself, that hour or two on stage is the tip of the iceberg. It's really about everything that comes around pageantry, like all of the community service that gets done by pageant women, um, it's significant. And all of the stories that women share just to try to inspire others through different things that they've gone through in their life. I think it's just worth it, do it once. Do it once and if you hate it, you don't have to do it again. And if you hate it, you can email me and blame me for it. But if you love it, your life will be changed forever, I promise. I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail in about two years. <laughs> No, I think you're going to get a lot of people thanking you. <laughs> that is kind of like the obstacle of getting over yourself and like your own like fears or like the self-conscious thing that, um, you know, women might have like, oh, you know, I like, you know, going back to our last um, question, like, oh, I didn't have the training to do, do this or, oh, I, I don't see myself doing this or, oh, I don't have this, this and this it's really like getting rid of those roadblocks in your, in your mind, whatever they are, and really just going for it. And I love, I couldn't have, you couldn't have said it any better. You just have to do it. Very good. <laughs> and that is how I feel about yoga. So we met at an event where you were leading the yoga practice and I don't practice yoga. And every time I'm about to do yoga, I feel that self-conscious thing. That's like, I'm going to do it wrong. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, do this and do that so foolish I never get the breathing right but that's not what it's about and I loved the session we had together because I felt so relaxed afterward you had just such a calming presence and you've got all the right moves so afterward I felt great but yeah even yoga can be intimidating but you just do it and then once you do it your body thanks you and your mind thanks you and you feel great Absolutely. I think that can carry forward with so many things, whether, you know, you're entering into pageant world for the first time, whether you're getting on your yoga mat, whether you're auditioning for a performance or a dance, whatever it is, um, all of those things, it's just kind of just pushing yourself to do it. And then finally, just putting yourself out there. Um, so thank you for kind of reiterating that. And um, you're just a prime example of that. So wonderful. <laughs> what led you to starting your own business? 
So I actually always wanted to work for myself. So it was always my plan. Um, the hurdle was I, I never quite knew exactly how I would do it or exactly what I would be doing. And it just so happened that I, I found the right opportunity. So in my industry, I noticed there was a hole, if you will, an unmet need that my particular skill set could fill. Um, I guess another story about my struggles. At that time, my husband and I had just started dealing with infertility. And so I had to, I, I went to see a specialist, but I was always having to go to appointments. I had to go to appointments once or twice a week to get blood, to get checkups, to, you know, get imaging and all these things. And I just started to feel like I, I hated asking permission from someone to get the time to take care of my own health and our family's health, because a lot of the hours in a, um, a fertility specialty practice fall within business hours. So I was always having to ask for time off. I was always having to not be there. And I don't know if my colleagues wondered where I was or not, it doesn't really matter, but I just didn't feel good about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna take a leap of faith. I'm gonna start my business. I'll be able to do what I need to do in terms of my health. <laughs> I won't need to ask anybody if you know I have a sick day or I wanna take a mental holiday or I want a vacation. I can do this. Um, and I took that leap of faith and I never looked back. And at this point it was, I think seven years ago. So that's a decision I don't regret at all. Awesome, congratulations. I think um, again, you know, that overlying theme of just doing things and um, just kind of listening to what's in your heart of hearts to proceed forward. And um, also thank you for sharing your uh, kind of infertility journey. I know um, many women, um, you know, of our age might be going through the same thing or um, might have be having those same kind of challenges. So I appreciate you sharing that because it just shows that you're not alone um, in this. And, you know, we're all here to kind of help lift each other up during challenging times, whether it's, you know, going through something like that or whether you're trying to start your business and not sure um, kind of which route to go. Um, perhaps mm -hmm. And congratulations on seven years in business is wonderful. So that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess what advice would you have for young women who are looking to pursue their dreams or um, maybe starting a business or entering a competition? I know you kind of already said this, but um, anything to kind of drive it home for anyone who's kind of on the fence or just not sure where to start with, you know, just getting into what they want to do. Okay, this is a great question because my first reaction is say that generic thing that's like, just be yourself, which is actually always good advice, but in terms of tactical advice, I guess I always find it helpful to put pen to paper if I'm trying to think something through and I can't quite think about it. Um, so some people like pros and cons lists. Some people like mind mapping. Um, I would say maybe write down, okay, here's what it is I wanna do. Write down all the reasons why you wanna do it. Write down, project into the future. If I do this, best cases scenario, this is what happens, okay? So you have that and you keep that there. Now on a separate piece of paper, write down all the reasons not to do it. You take that piece of paper, you rip it up, you put it down the toilet, and then you go back to that other paper of all the reasons to do it and all of the good things that can come from it. And even leave a blank part because when we do things, there's so many benefits that are unforeseen to us and we have to leave our mind and heart open for the unexpected. So maybe as you do it and those unexpected things happen, write those down in there. And then you're just gonna keep seeing how, you know, this energy you put out keeps coming back to you more and more. And you're gonna be glad you threw away that other piece of trash. <laughs> you won't even think about that trash, that's gone. <laughs> Absolutely, I think that's such a great 
thing to do to actually write things down. Um, I feel like also we're in like such a technology driven world, like actually taking a pen and paper, writing things down, making a notebook, journaling, um, really like being able to cross things off is just so satisfying. So <laughs> thank you for suggesting the list thing, but then um, also just, you know, really thinking about what is going to make you know, me happier as a person, what's going to make me a better version of myself. And I'm sure those things are, would be on that list. Um, yeah. well, yes, I think everything that you just said is just wonderful. So I hope everyone watching this, you will do that. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, you can email me and complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said it first, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone's like, this is a terrible idea. No, we're only going to be emailing you all. <laughs> um, lastly, my last question for you, and thank you so much for all of the tidbits of knowledge that you've shared with us, but what is it that keeps you going personally during challenging times? Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, sometimes it just feels like sheer momentum. It just feels like, you know, when my best friend passed away, like, how, how do I move forward? Um, not to be a Debbie Downer, but like two weeks ago, we had to put our dog down and he's been with us since we were newlyweds and we don't have any children. So he's been with us for almost 12 years. So he was our little guy. And so initially when we had to put him down, I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> how do I do this? But honestly, beyond sheer momentum, which sometimes kicks in that human instinct to just survive and thrive just kicks in. Um, I think just supportive family and friends, just, you know, my husband, my parents, my friends, and just knowing how much they believe in me. So even if I'm feeling down, I'm like, well, if they believe I can do it, I must be able to do it because they're smart people. You know, they don't, they're not going to put stock into just, um, just nobody. So they, their support and just their love really helps. Absolutely. And just as a reminder, you are such a role model to so many young women. Everything that you do, people are looking up to you and um, you've just been such an inspiration, I'm sure, in your community, but then also just outreaching now, like even just you and you have such a wonderful platform that, you know, it just it expands beyond your crown. It expands into your community, expands to your family, your friends and um you're just a wonderful person. So thank you so much for thank joining. Thank you. Us. That is so sweet. <laughs> the opportunity. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. And on behalf of Two Hearts Dance and Yoga, thank you so much, Mary Lisa. We are so happy to have you. Can't wait to share this with our community and can't wait to hear all of the exciting things that you continue to do. Um, where can people learn more about you or tune into your YouTube channel or learn more about everything else that you're doing? My YouTube channel is called All of Our Appearances Have Been Canceled. So you can type that in there. Um, if you're a Facebook user, my official account is Mrs. Pennsylvania America. So you can find me there. Um, I'm on Instagram a lot. So my pageant related Instagram handle is really long, but it's something like Mrs. Pennsylvania. America 2020. I think if you just start typing it in, it'll pop up. Um, so those are the, the three best um, places. And I guess I shouldn't give you my email address because I'm going to get all the hate mail. But <laughs> uh, I do respond, you know, if you follow me, if you post on my post, or if you DM me, um, I'm always happy to talk about almost anything. But I mean, if you have questions about pageantry, hit me up if you have questions about um, infertility and child freeness. Hit me up if you have questions about starting your own business or just, you know, just general life, general being a woman in 2020. Um, I'm always happy to chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we will make sure we put all of those um, handles and everything down below the video. But yeah, thank you. It would only be love mail. No, never. never any <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> But thank you so much.